Greetings. It has been a wee while since I made a video about horrible experimental noises and kind of heavy vibes and that sort of thing. So I thought it'd be good fun to get back into some of that today. This is going to follow on from the first video that I ever uploaded here, which was about making a kind of Doom and Tenet inspired bass synth machine thing uh, using purely plugins built into Ableton and that kind of thing. Today I'm going to show another way that you can come up with riffs using the same kind of bass sound and effects chain and how to get creative with it or write stuff. This is a sound that I'd use to make a really disgusting heavy riff that has more of an electronic music or synth texture to it than a guitar sound, but hopefully it'll also combine really nicely with some metal style guitars down the line uh, and I'll also get into doing some of that in this video. I'm going to focus on using this kind of synth sound as the main feature in a riff or groove and how you could use it to start structuring a song or get inspired for sections of your tracks. So yeah, I'm just going to pretty much jump straight into this. So I'm going to show you the sound and the riff that we're going to start working with today. I'll play it quickly first without any of the Doom effects chain on it and then I'll engage it to show you sort of what it does to the sound. But yeah, here is the riff that I'm going to work with today. So as you can hear, it's not really like a great sound. It's pretty uh, pretty crap, to be honest. Um, but it's a built-in preset from one of Ableton's uh, synths, which is called Operator. And yeah, it's just in this folder here called Bass, and it is this 3-op bass. Um, I think I've made some slight adjustments to the decay and the release, so it just so that the sound sort of cuts off more abruptly and doesn't have much release. But other than that, I think it's pretty much as it would be um, without much tweaking. So basically, yeah, obviously it doesn't sound great at the moment, but this effects chain will change that in a minute. Um, but I just want to sort of talk about the idea behind the riff and what you're sort of going for, um, or what I'm going for with this vibe. Basically, I'm trying to come up with a cool riff that works around the 4-4 pulse at roughly 180 BPM. And I think it's important that you should be able to nod your head to a bass line or imagine where the snare might fall without even having it in there yet. And if I play it with the click track, uh, you'll probably be able to hear what I mean. So if I engage that now, And yeah, um, I'm also imagining this in the context of a sort of metal style rhythmic genty riff with some fun rhythmic accents. And I think these kind of riffs are a lot about the interplay between long held notes, sudden speedy fills and little satisfying gaps of silence. You can see that I've made a start on that here by using this big long note to open the riff, followed by some little offbeat um, stabs. And then there's this little quick 16th note detail here using very, very short MIDI notes. Um, and that's to kind of emulate like the guitar part mutey thing. Let's hear all of that again, but now through the Doomy effects chain. So I have another video out where I sort of go into detail about um, the whole setup here. In, uh, it's not really that complicated, but yeah, if you want to know more about it, um, I've got a video out where I sort of touch on that in detail. But yeah, that's kind of cool because now that's set up on this, I can obviously use that like an instrument. So that's pretty cool because you can start making a riff with that pretty dope sound, um, which is what I've started to do here. I'll just show you now quickly like some of the fun you can have with that. So if I change some of the sort of... It is actually the OTT setup that's kind of doing the most to that, to be honest. But um, yeah, anyway, so now that you've got that sound, it's pretty cool to sort of start getting an idea together with it, basically. Um, not the best riff that I've ever come up with. It'll work to show some stuff off today. To help me form a direction with this, I'm going to start adding some drums in. The basic idea, I think, is going to be to have the snare hitting on beats two and four for that kind of consistent backbeat type of thing. So you've got that kind of satisfying and consistent element in the groove. Then the kick drum is going to follow and reinforce the bass line rhythm in unison with it to make it punch through a lot more. So yeah, I'm just going to sort of pop that in now. So let's trigger that. Ooh. 
Yeah. So I can actually turn off the doom thing for now, just to make sure that I'm... Um... Uh, I'm going to chuck in some little hi-hat box, which is like yeah, the open hi-hat thing, to make that sort of punch a little bit more. Um... Yeah, that works. Do a little double kick drum there, and I'll just, I'll just add core note hi hat for now. Let's copy that out. So the second time this riff happens, there's a little extra gap here. So let's move that uh, hi hat stab over. Let's have a second one of those to kind of um, complete that little phrasing there. By the way, I have a whole video out going into detail about making this kind of drum kit sound yourself with Addictive Drums 2, and this preset is available for free download from a link in that video description if that's of any use or interest. But yeah, I'm just going to skip forward to a pre-programmed version of this drum beat that I've already made just to save a bit of time um, so you don't have to watch me program a whole beat. But yeah, um, with that, now we've kind of got this. But yeah, another thing to mention is obviously, I think early on at this point, it's good to leave these kind of rhythmic gaps in the pattern because it gives us the kind of, gives you the ability to fill these spaces with something else a little bit later. Yeah, bring a sense of progression that way by kind of like filling the gaps that were previously unoccupied can kind of help lend a sense of progression to moving things along. So that will probably do for the time being. And at this point, it'll probably be fun to add in some guitars. So I'm going to do that now. And yeah, you might have noticed that um, I've been programming this riff in C and that's just so that I can tune my six string guitar comfortably down to that pitch um, so I can kind of join with it. I'm going to switch over to that now and we'll do some fun drop C chugging. I'm going to use this amp sim called Archetype Petrucci by Neural DSP. I'm sure guitarists know about it. Let's turn the gate up a little bit. So. Uh, that'll do probably, I think. So I'm just going to sort of jam that with the uh, with the bass and drums and see if I can kind of work out that bass riff on guitar. I'm just going to keep it simple and try and sort of record exactly in unison to what that bass riff is doing. going to copy paste that out as a loop that'll do and I'll do a second take of that um, for the left as well right that'll do for now so let's have a listen to the left and right combined. So 
So I think that adds something quite nice. Something else I wanted to point out is because of the uh, because of the amount of compression and stuff that's happening on the Doom base effect array, you lose quite a lot of the subway energy from the uh, from the base. So um, there's a couple of ways that you could add it back in. You could, um, I mean, we could, I could add the, you could do it on a bass guitar. So I could add a five string bass part with this. But another quick way to just solve that is to get up something like sub sign bass. If you just type in, if you just grab this preset to start with and bang it on another MIDI track. And if we copy out the uh, riff intro MIDI, um, let's put that actually over here. Um, and now, Basically, yeah, we're just creating a second copy of that bass part and sending it to um, a sub synth. So I'll layer that in and. That's something else that's quite cool that you can do using Archetype Prochucci is just pitch the whole thing down a whole octave and then it basically makes it sound like an eight string guitar, which is uh, pretty good fun. Uh, now we've got those three tracks. I'm actually gonna go back to the session view here and I'm gonna put those onto clips again. And I guess that's all the guitar recording done so I can move on to the next bit of this. <laughs> Now, uh, now we've got all this going. So let's wake it up a bit. So basically, yeah, now we've got that kind of rolling and we've got a nice little groove looping up. Sounds pretty chunky. Um, the proper fun begins now where we start messing with this doom patch around that to create some variations and fills. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that I could do here. Obviously, there's all these settings that I could tweak. And if I wanted to, I could like map some of these to MIDI controls. In fact, let's like go ahead and do that now. So just going to map a few of these at random. Um, Let's scroll through the distortion types with that, but that will do for now. And yeah, so if I could just give this a play, like. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go a bit crazy with this, but before I go any further with that, what I'm gonna do is record a default version of this riff so that we don't lose it. So I'm just gonna create a blank audio track and call that uh, vanilla bass, even though it's obviously not that vanilla. Um, set the external wind to the uh, and then yeah, set that to record. And now our audio from this bass patch should come through on this vanilla bass channel, so. Right, so whatever happens, um, we've got that. So that's just the default um, bass loop, right? Without any more crazy effects processing going on it. Cause I kind of don't, I don't want to lose like the core of that riff and I want to be able to like come back to it and reuse it. Basically the idea is I'm just going to record a load of variations of that uh, bass riff with all the different effects and just see what we get out of it. I'm going to record a whole load of it. And yeah, we're just going to basically get a load of nonsense going. So let me just copy out a nice amount of uh, regions. And uh, yeah, I've shown this off before, but um, we're just going to do a bunch of random settings tweaking and see what other kind of stupid noises we can generate from uh, this bass patch. So let's create a new one. Let's call this like effects spaces. We'll set that to record our track. Um, set that to record. And yeah, pretty much now I'm just going to go through and do a bunch of nonsense. So. Let's add some different effects. 
so we can start getting different variations. Uh, so, for example, let's chuck in buffer override because it's hilarious. Um, so this will do some absolute pure nonsense. <laughs> So that will get fun. Uh, and we could add Redux, which is um, Ableton's built-in bit crusher thingy, Bobby. Um, so that will do some cool stuff as well. Let's have a look at that. Live cut can do some pretty hilarious things like beat repeat is doing, but more more ridiculous, I suppose. So <laughs> um, let's turn off beat repeat because otherwise that's just going to go fucking nuts. Um... I think we're getting some pretty nice stuff out of that. So um, some other silly things, obviously, if I like just grab some of these um, starting input notes that are feeding into this whole chain, and if I maybe just like, I could add in a couple of like little octave jumps or something. Um, so that's quite easy to do. And if I pitch this note up to like a really ridiculously high value or like pretty high, so let's make that like a C5 and that one, maybe like a, I don't know. This could sound rubbish. I'm just messing about and experimenting here. So see what happens. Um, <laughs> that's because the live cuts on there. So that's almost a decent amount of nonsense. I'm going to get one more lot and just show you a couple more effects that can be quite cool. So um, it's, it can be a little bit risky or a bit um, can make things go a little bit nuts if you're not careful with how it works. But um, yeah, auto pan can do some more right stuff on this where it will kind of send the sound like bouncing between your different speakers. But um, I'd be careful not to have it on like all the time constantly because um, it can just make like phase problems happen a little bit. So. I'll sort of show you. Um, I I wouldn't have it on for like the main kind of things, but whenever there's like a um, like a little rhythmic fill or something, if you kind of kick it up whilst that fill is happening. Okay, so that has given us quite a bit of stuff to work with, and what I'm going to do is drag that vanilla bass line back in, pop that up here onto this sort of main track, um, and now we're going to disable the actual synthesis version of the filth bass. Um, let's re-enable the vanilla bass part, and yeah, basically now I'm going to make this green, so I sort of know what I'm looking at, and that's like our top layer. Let's make that red, just so it's a bit clearer. And yeah, pretty much the idea is I'm just going to like collage together something out of all these different recordings and see if I can kind of get an, a new overall riff together going out of all those different pieces of it to make it more interesting than just the vanilla bass loop on its own, right? And it's literally just a case of like just grabbing bits and sort of dragging them up onto that top track here. But yeah, m little bits and pieces like that might sound quite cool. Like that. That was kind of interesting, I might just uh... And like, yeah, obviously at this point it's probably important to turn the guitars back on so we can kind of hear it. Um... <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. Right. And yeah, to have a few of these sort of, um, these stabs change texture, like halfway through whilst they're happening can be quite cool sometimes, so for example, if I chuck that little bit of... Might not have been the most pleasing bit of that. So for example, we... <laughs> Okay. Uh... <laughs> oh, that's... Um, 
well that's utterly ridiculous but i'm going to leave it there just because it's funny probably would never use that in the natural riff but uh, that's quite good fun what's that sound like in place maybe not maybe we'll just leave those bits for now this gnarly little customer here let's try that See, that's where the, the auto pan thing came in quite handy because that was quite cool having that like little detail. Um, and you can obviously like you could experiment with like grabbing sections from other parts where they're not meant to happen and just sort of splice them in at random points in the riff, see what that does. Something we could actually do just in the edit, I wanted to add maybe another stab here in this gap just to add some variation. So. Maybe let's put it there. That's kind of cool. So that's quite a cool way to kind of cheekily, artificially add details to your riff there. Obviously I didn't record in that guitar stab, but I can just edit. Um, I can just grab one of them and edit it over to sort of add a detail to the riff that way as well there. Ah, oh, stupidity. That was very cool. <clears throat> yeah, absolute <clears throat> filthy business. Right, I reckon that'll do for now. Um, usually I would probably spend way more time on that and just, you know, make sure it's like perfect and exactly what I want it to be. <laughs> So I'm going to start giving this some structure and pretty much the way that I can do that is um, I'm going to create a duplicate of our collaged bass track again and I'm going to put the vanilla bass back on its own track here just so I've got a couple rounds of that going. Um, and then with this top bass loop, this collaged version of it, I'm going to uh, consolidate that together so it becomes one audio file. It just looks a bit neater and a bit nicer to deal with. Gross synth bass. I'm going to basically highlight and grab all of my arrangement and let's drag that over. So um, we've got a little bit of intro to work with. And just something that I think works wonders on this type of sound is using it for intros or like little bridges and stuff like that. If I put auto filter on this. So yeah, you can probably imagine where I'm going with this. So I'm going to just automate the um, what this filter is doing here. And I'm going to have it start out low and then gradually kind of fade up. Uh, and of course, as I was doing earlier, sending this vanilla bass with the filter on it to a reverb can also sound really cool. And then, yeah, I guess we'll just have it all kick in with our riff here once we get here. Or maybe we could actually get rid of part of the guitars. Let's get rid of them up till that point. And then um, I also created a little synth pad earlier, which I've forgotten to drag in here, but I've used that with the Farfisa 5 by Arturia. And um, yeah, it's just like a sort of held pad, a chord sort of thing. Um, so let's drag that in. And before I forget, I did actually program a slightly busier version of that drum part with a kind of more, um, if I just solo it, I've put in like a... Some more details in the drums. So I'm gonna drag over that new loop.
I guess that's kind of a thing. Um, obviously, it's only like the start of an idea, be like the opening of a track, I suppose, but it kind of gives you hopefully an idea of where I would start with this type of sound and kind of how to start getting a song idea going or a riff idea. But yeah, obviously, I hope this has been interesting to anyone who's been curious about maybe how you can go about doing this sort of thing yourself. And this is just how I would approach it, really. It's not like too complicated i think i hope anyway once everything's kind of explained i think this is all pretty like there's not many tracks going on here and it's quite simple and just the workflow i think is like a really fun creative way to do it basically but yeah i hope that's been of use or of interest to anybody or maybe just a fun little watch and just a bunch of horrible noises if you like that kind of thing so thanks very much for watching and i'll hopefully catch you in the next one take it easy <laughs> I'm gonna do what 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 I'm g